Welcome to section 419 where we're going to discuss this idea of linkage, which you'll see really has two parts. I guess you could say like autosomal linkage as well as sex linkage. Now the first straight up linkage, which is really autosomal typically, uh, it's going to occur on these autosomal chromosomes, the ones that don't code for gender. What's going to happen here is that our chromosomes function within our cells as packages of genes. We've said before they hold anywhere from maybe a hundred up to thousands of genes on one single chromosome. So what happens here is if you have two genes, both of which exist on that same chromosome, you tend to get them together because they're part of the same package. And so this means, like in the example here, if I've got little a and big B on the same chromosome, I'm typically going to get the recessive trait for A and the dominant trait for B together as a package. So an offspring will tend to see these things packaged accordingly, where you might have some individuals that tend to be dominant for A and recessive for B, others that tend to be the opposite, but you don't tend to see a mix. You won't tend to see many people that are dominant for both or people that are recessive for both. These are what we call recombinants, where you mix things up. And so because we don't see those individuals at the ratios we're supposed to, like that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, etc., we can figure out something's going on and independent assortment is not occurring. So Mendel didn't really see this because he didn't really study traits that were on the same chromosome. But we now have done this, so we realize when we see that two particular combinations, so it would be like saying uh, tall with dark hair, short with light hair. If we almost never see the reverses, if we almost never see tall with light hair or short with dark hair, that's almost a surefire sign that linkage is going on. And so some of these alleles are being packaged together because their genes are on the same chromosome. Now, if the genes are on a different chromosome, this doesn't happen because you can ultimately grab this chromosome that has little a, for instance, but I can grab with either of these. I can get little a, big D, or I can get little a, little d. It has no effect. So if it's on a separate chromosome, you will not have linkage. This only occurs if you're talking about things that are on the same chromosome. And you can see that down here below where you can have this first chromosome with little a, big B can be with either of the Ds. But notice it's still always little a, big B. And the same thing if we get the other chromosome, we always get big A, little b. But once again, it can be with either D. It doesn't matter. Now, we can break this. We call that recombination, where sometimes we will mix things up. So for instance, if I have crossing over occur, and this is just three different genes, there's two possibilities for the first one. You can think yellow and green if you want, white and red, and maroon and lavender. I have no idea. I'm just making stuff up. Doesn't matter what they are. Uh, but there are three different locations for the genes on a particular chromosome. If crossing over occurs in between, in this long gap here, in between these guys, it will break linkage between the Y, W, etc., and then this last gene. So if we just kind of think of this as gene 1, 2, and 3, you'll see that 1 and 2 are very close together. And so for us to break linkage, for us to separate the Y and the W, for us to separate the G and the R, crossing over has to occur in this very small segment here, this very small region. And because of that, you can see it seldom happens. You know, you see linkage in a huge number of individuals. You're talking at this point, if you add these up, like 3,400 and something. You get a separation, you get a, a recombination that's occurring due to crossing over between the guys close to each other like 40 times. That's versus 3,400. So you can see it's rare to have crossing over separate you. It's rare to have recombination occur if you're close to each other. Now, if genes are far apart, so if we look at like WR and we look at ML, so genes 2 and 3, there's a big gap between them. So crossing over can occur randomly in a lot of different places and separate those two. And we see that in the fact that there's like hmm, about 1,700 recombinants for that one. That's way more than we had for the first one because they're so far apart. We can figure out the distances between genes by using their recombination frequency, by using how often we break linkage. And we can even use that sometimes to try to make up maps. But the overall goal here is the further apart two genes are on a chromosome, the more likely recombination is to occur. The more likely crossing over will split them apart so we can ultimately get, instead of just tall, dark, short, and pale, we could get short and dark and tall and pale. We could get those other mixes. Now sex linkage I think is a bit more straightforward. 
With sex linkage, it's just going to be some gene that's on either the X or Y chromosome. Now, the Y chromosome has very few genes. It's got like 100 in humans. So it's seldom going to be on the Y chromosome. But if it was, it'd always affect only males, because only males have a Y. So typically, this is going to be on the X chromosome. And it's typically going to be recessive, because dominant genes, if they're negative, because that's usually what we track as kind of these negative things, they would usually kill their host or prevent it from reproducing, and so they die with their host. Whereas recessive genes can hide, so if you're going to be a negative disorder, or if you're going to be a problem, so to speak, it's best to be recessive because your host doesn't have to have the condition. They can just be a carrier for it, so they can pass it on to their kids, but they won't have it. So because these traits are typically X-linked recessive, they're going to affect mostly males. Females usually won't have to worry too much about this, even though it's X-linked, and you might think X female. And the rationale for this is females have two X's. So if we're doing a Punnett square, a female in the Punnett square is going to have two X's. The male is going to be XY. Now if we do something like colorblindness, which happens to be an X-linked recessive trait, uh, we can use, we'll use H's. So big H can be normal vision. And we can say little h is going to be colorblind. All right, these are our two alleles. Now this is only on the X chromosome. So this Y will not have any H's. Let's say the male is healthy. He's not colorblind. Let's say the mom's healthy. She's not colorblind, but she's a carrier. She's a heterozygote. You can start to see here that the daughters, which will be up top, they are both going to be healthy. And the reason I can guarantee that is dad will always give his particular allele to all the daughters. So if the dad's healthy, there's no way the daughters can be affected. For a daughter to be affected, both the dad has to be unhealthy as well as the mother has to at least be a carrier. Right? In this case, because the dad's healthy, all the daughters will be fine. So none of the daughters are going to be affected. Now for the sons, though, they only get one allele and they get it from mom. And so in this case, you can see that mom will pass on this one colorblind allele that she possesses to one of her two sons, probability speaking. So 50% of the males, 50% of the sons will be colorblind, while none of the females will. This is what you tend to see with things like sex linkage. It's not that it only affects males. There are females that are affected by some of these X-linked recessive traits, but it tends to predominantly affect males because they only get one shot. You know, if it's a recessive trait, females have two shots to get a dominant and be healthy. Males, if it's a recessive trait, get one shot, and if they get the recessive, they express it. So if you happen to see some pattern of inheritance where males are, tend to be affected, uh, that's typically going to indicate that you have sex linkage going on, that the gene that's causing it is located on the X chromosome most likely.